Hey everyone, welcome to this new session on the code on wage 2019 that was passed and approved in 2019. Still, it is pending for implementation, but this rule is one of the important key for making reforms in the employment industries doing business ease and the good governance so here i'm starting it with how this code come to in an existence that is a collaboration or amalgamation of the four existing labor laws that was the payment of wage act 1936 the minimum wage act 1948 and the payment of bonus act 1965 then the equal remuneration act 1976 the 1936 act the payment of wage act was initially introduced by the british government during the rule in india specifically for the tea garden employees and the people who were deported to another countries from india on some specific pay band so the payment of wage has been amended many time since 1936 and after freedom of indian subconstituent so the ultimate purpose of this code or this law was to ensure payment of wage to employee are disbursed on time and no undue deduction are made so there was a two main purpose one the payment what is due for a person what he has earned that should be paid on time and second there should not be any illegal or wrongful deduction from their wages the amount which need to be paid to him or paid to him The second was the minimum wage act in 1948 this act was introduced or implemented whole india except jammu and kashmir state but at that time it was not there and after the one year of indian independence so there this act act was implemented to enable fixing of minimum rates of wage in certain employment otherwise the employer can pay to them and harass them physically doing for a long hours but they could be paid to them minimum that's why this idea come in true and this minimum wage act 1940 it was introduced implemented throughout india to fixing a minimum rate of wage in a certain employment the payment of bonus act 1965 when the employer is making a huge profit in that part the role of a employee is mandatory crucial to earning that huge amount and profit they should have some portion and making the employer responsible to give some bonus or reward to the employees who are working for their unit purpose and their industry they should be they should be rewarded with some amount that was the bonus and the reward that need to be paid to them definitely so that's why 
the payment of bonus act was introduced introduced in 1965 to provide for payment of bonus to person employed in certain establishments on the basis of profit or production or productivity so there may be bonus is have three criteria one is the profit sharing bonus second is the production bonus what production unit they have paid it should be separate for their services they are tendering for you then productivity what you are achieving on your given target that is your productivity so it should be rewarded with something then the equal remuneration act 1976 this act was specifically introduced and implemented to mandate equal remuneration to prevent the gender discrimination in employment matters means if two people who are different in gender doing the same work same task same job they need to be paid through same amount to protect this right of the employment this act was introduced in 1976 so the code on wage 2019 it is a uniform universal wage code which has been introduced by the government of india to make easy or universalize or uniform the wage rule throughout the country so this code was implemented introduced still it is pending for implementation so what is this code we are going to discuss here in this session today the wage code is it and what is it is saying about and so we are going to discuss here mainly this code is specifically giving us the uniform definition of wage what is it there has been drafted a central rule for how this wage could be calculated and how it will be implemented through different procedures or a universal or common procedure that's why this code has been introduced so one of the important key feature of this wage code is that have given the uniform definition for the wage and other definition they have been changed sub new employment sector and the gig economy sector has been introduced in this code on wage 2019 but the most important key is that the universal key or the uniform definition of wage has been clarified here as the wage means all remuneration whether by of salaries allowances or otherwise expressed in a term of money or capable of being so expressed which would in the term of employment express or implied were fulfilled be payable to a person employed in the respect of his employment or of work done in such employment and includes there is a three basic component so there are which is defined in this uniform definition of wage three component that is the basic pay dns allowances and retaining allowances now what this three component describe here that 
वट एवर यू आर पेइंग टू यूर एम्प्लॉय दैट वुड ऑल बी पे एक्सेप्ट समथिंग द फैसिलिटेशन एडिशनली यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग सो बेसिक पे डियरनेस अलाउंसेस बेसिक पे विच यू हैव डिफाइंड फॉर द वर्क बेस इज ऑन इट्स क्रिटिकलिटी सो दैट इज द बेस पे देन द डियरनेस अलाउंसेस इज देयर एक्सपेंसेस which are the daily expenses a person a employee he is bearing for is commuting for his essential requirement like clothing fooding and sheltering so that come under this dearness allowances it to be be calculated basis on the rate of inflation increased then the retaliation allowances means what are the other allowances you are paying to an employee to retain him in his in your organization so these are the three basic component which are mentioned in this wage on code 1920 2019 you have to keep in mind but here is also mentioned that in the page some component some other factor which are not included and while you will calculate or restructure your wage for employee that should not be included like bonus payable under any law for the time being in force which does not from part of remuneration payable under the term of employment then value of any house accommodation or hra so if you are providing some accommodation to your employee whatever the value that are occurring for that house accommodation that will not be considered as wage or any of the supply of light water medical any additional facilities you are providing to your employee that should not be considered in the definition of wage then any contribution paid to by the employer to any pension or provident fund that would not also be included in the wage of definition convenience allowance that would also not be considered under that is a direct expense for an employee he is that incurred on his commuting per day or any traveling concession and any sum which is going which you are paid to any employed person differing special expenses entertain on him by nature of his employment that will also not include house rent allowances that would not also be remuneration payable under any reward or settlement between the parties or order of the court that would not be a wage then any overtime which the person is doing or earning based on the extra working beyond their entitled time for that particular job which the wage has been decided and fixed for so that will not be include then commission payable to the employee that would also not be included in the definition of wage any gratuity any retrenchment compensation here you need to understand that when you calculate the wage under this clause you need to remember that to the clause number five or clause number 6 it has mentioned about the clause 2 when it is mentioning about the wage under this clause when you are going to calculate the wage under this clause if p 
payment made by the employee to the employee under clause A to I exceed one half or such other percent may be notified by the central government of the all remuneration calculated under this clause the amount which exceed such one half or the percent so notified shall be deemed as a remuneration and shall be accordingly added in wage under this clause means if you are when the wage is calculating under there if any part you are paying to him one thing you need to keep in mind that if you are a person considering that the person is a sale manager having 2 lakh rupees a monthly wage that is not wage that is salary wage is for the specific sector of job which are known as blue collar job we define the worker definition so that if any portion you are paying for any employee if that going down provided that to the calculating the wage under this clause if payment made by the employee to the employee under clause a to i which has mentioned above exceed one half or such other percent as may be notified by the central government of the all the remuneration calculated under this wage the amount which exceeds such one half or the percent so notified shall be deemed as a remuneration and shall be accordingly added in the wage under this clause so further the purpose of equal wage to all gender are for the purpose of payment of wage the emolument specified in clause d and f g and s shall be taken for computation of wage if which has been mentioned about that go 50 percent rest of that the wages you are paying if go that 50 percent above to the wage defined so that will be considered as wage so that's why it is considered that half of your wage or ctc would be basic wage or basic pay now here the explanation is mentioned that where an employee is given in lieu of the whole or part of a wage payable to him any remuneration in kind by his employment the value of such remuneration in kind which does not exceed 15 percent understand it here that if that does not any employee whatever you are given to whole or part of the base be able to him any remuneration in kind by his employer the value of such remuneration in kind which does not exceed 15 percent of the total wage payable to him shall be deemed to from part of the wage such employee and there is the definition for worker given as i have mentioned this is wage is specifically for the worker that how it need to be calculated based on that you have to restructure it for all your employees even that are your supervisory or that are your workmen so here the definition of worker has been changed that are the any person except an apprentice as defined under the clause A of section 2 of the apprentice section 1961 that act is remain same no changes has been happened there employed in any industry for any manual unskilled skilled technical operational 
क्लरिकल और सुपरवाइजरी वर्क फॉर हायर और रिवॉर्ड वेदर द टर्म ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट बी एक्सप्रेस और इम्प्लाइड एंड इंक्लूड वर्किंग जर्नलिस्ट दे आर बीन नाउ इंक्लूड इन दैट डिफाइन इन द क्लोज एफ ऑफ द सेक्शन टू ऑफ वर्किंग जर्नलिस्ट एंड अदर न्यूज पेपर एम्प्लॉय कंडीशन ऑफ सर्विसेज एंड मिसलिनियस प्रोविजन एक्ट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फाइव एंड द सेल प्रमोशन एम्प्लॉय हैज ऑल्सो बीन डिफाइन इन दिस क्लॉज आर द इन द कम अंडर द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द वर्कर नाव so for the purpose of any proceeding under this code in relation to an industrial dispute include any such person who has dismissed discharged or retrenched or otherwise terminated in connection with or as a consequence of that dispute or whose dismissal discharge or retrenchment has led to that dispute he will be come under the category of worker but here those person some person or some employee who are working in the air force and navy who is employed police services and officer other employee who are the people working in the private sector they come under the definition of worker but for a certain level the person who employed in a manager or administrative capacity or who is employed in a supervisory capacity drawing wage of exceeding 15000 per month or an amount as may be notified by the central government from time to time they would not be covered under this definition of worker so now it is also said that there is a prevention mentioned that there should not be any discrimination on the ground of gender in any organization establishment unit when there are two different gender people doing the same job task even that is skilled or non skilled supervisory non supervisory that you need to take care their same remuneration and you need to pay that to both the gender it should be same but no employer shall for the purpose of complying with the provision of this one reduce the rate of wage of any employee means there is one woman or one male employee or worker whose salary or wage have difference if the one men having or getting wage is 15000 and female is getting the fixed wage for that particular position is 12000 so there it should not be the employer cannot reduce the wage of men whose salary is 50 but he need to increase the wage of female worker equal to the male worker means 15000 so there should not be any discrimination on the sex while recruiting or any employee for the same work or work of similar nature in the condition of employment except where the employment of women in such work is prohibited or restricted by or under the law of the time being in force so 
decision as to dispute with regard to the same similar nature of work who will be responsible for that that need to be taken care as per the section 3 by the appropriate government so now the payment of minimum rate of wage how it would be calculated and described and fixing of the wage who will do it as per this act as for a person who is in structuring of the wage structure for organization you should keep in mind the three things first there has been the definition of wage changes second thing there is some portion the services facility and the some amount you are facilitating above to their fixed services and some facilities that would not be included in the page and now if the other remuneration accepting of these remuneration that go more than 51 percent or half of that that should be included in the wage now so now come to here no employer shall pay to any employee wage less than the minimum rate of wage notified by the government of appropriate government after this implementation of this code the central government will introduce or implement a floor wage throughout India same or it will be geographical basis then after the appropriate government will make the fix the minimum wage for particular section of work or class of work so it should not be less than the floor wage or if it is less than if it is more than floor wage so the appropriate government or the employer cannot reduce the wage down to the floor wage level so here the subject of the provision it has been a section and uh, that mentioned in the section 9 the appropriate government shall fix the minimum rate of wage payable to employ in accordance with the provision of section 8 we will check it later and now for the purpose of subsection 1 the appropriate government shall fix a minimum wage for the time work and for peace work also where employee are employed on peace rate or the time rate mean hourly base races then wage for securing such employee a minimum rate of wage on a time and basis so that's why if you have seen that so there when there in increase in the da so that has been divided based on per day when you have to calculate it for the r so you have to divide it with the eight r then you can decide that based on the hours the minimum rate of wage on a time work basis may be fixed to accordance with any one or more of the following wage period that would be hourly that would be a day that would be a month so there is a three period mentioned and finalized or fixed for a wage fixing for the appropriate government or the based on that employer would decide or fix their wage based on the three criteria one is for hourly wage second one is for day and third one is for month so when the rate of wage are fixed by the hour and by the day or the month the manner of calculating wage shall be such as prescribed on the three level that are the hour by the day or the month for the purpose of fixation of minimum rate of wage under this section what the appropriate government means the state government what they can do primarily they shall take into the account the skill of works mean 
it is already based on the skill basis they are the three categories of skills has been drived throughout india to define or fix the minimum wage for specific sector of skill or work that is the unskilled skilled and semi skilled highly skilled or now it would be geography based or both the basis may in addition to such a minimum rate of wage for certain category of worker take into account their endurances of work life temperature or humidity normally difficult to be a hazard occupation or process for underground work as may be prescribed by the government for the norm of such fixation of minimum rate of wage shall be such as may be prescribed means if there is a some criticality of work that the normal physic can not tolerate that particular situation of the work location so you have to decide something additional or something separate amount for that particular criticality of the position or job then the components of a minimum wage what it would be now finally we have discussed about the three major component but based on that what would should be the final component of the basic wage the minimum wage that come under the section 7 the minimum rate of wage fixed or revised by the appropriate government according to the section 8 of this code on wage that is a basic rate of wage in allowance at a rate of adjusted at such interval and in such a manner as the appropriate government may direct to accord as nearly as practic practicable with the variation in the cost of living index applicable to such worker here in after referred to as cost of living allowances so the basic wage is what and an allowance that should be given to that employee which is supporting the living index of such a worker or class then second the basic rate of wage with or without the cost of living and the cash value of the concession in respect of supply of essential commodities at the connection rate wage so authorized the second way to decide this wage is the person where he is living what are the essential commodities required for his livelihood considering that need needs the basic rate of wage should be decided and all inclusive rate allowing for the basic rate the cost of living allowances and the cash value of the concession if any is available that would be considered under basic wage then the cost of living allowance and the cash value of concession in respect of supplies of essential commodities at concession rate shall be computed by such authority as the appropriate government may be notification they would give the notification or constitute a notification or they will report it through the notification what are the changes may be happen in the basic wage or the minimum rate of wage then in fixation of the minimum rate of wage for the first time or in revising minimum rate of wage under this code the appropriate government what they should 
consider and what they shall consider here is the procedure mentioned for fixing of the minimum rate of wage or revising that they may appoint a committee then that should be notify in public or its proposal for the information person to getting their ideas then that committee appoint some representative of employer then representing of employee which shall be equal to the numbers then independent person not exceeding one third of the total member of the committee so after considering all these three factor they consider the recommendation of the committee appointed under the clause and they represent and receive before the date specified in the notification further that the process for revising of the rate of wage in the manner specified in the clause b subsection 1 shall also consult concerned advisory board constituted under section 42 of this act then the appropriate government shall review or revise the minimum rate of wage ordinary at an interval not exceeding five years means if there is a minimum rate fixed there it should not be for revision more than five years means within a five year the minimum wage need to be revised but dearness allowances which has been revised after six months that is a dearness allowances supporting to the inflation then this provided that the different floor wage may be fixed for different geographies this is the power of central government they will fix a floor Beige that would be based on equal to all reason otherwise it would be based on the geographical requirements and based on that the appropriate government means the state government what they do they should fix their minimum rate of wage based on the floor wage that but when the appropriate government means the state government fix the minimum rate of wage if that is already above to the floor wage so they could not reduce it up to down to the level of floor wage so in that case the state government need to seek or advise from the central advisory board here you need to understand that the wage of employee who work for less than normal working days their wage will be calculated as per the portion of time fixed under this what is that employee who holds minimum rate of wage has been fixed under the code by the day work of any day on which he was employed for a period of less than the requisite number of hours constituted a non normal working day what a normal working day defined he shall save as otherwise hereafter provided and be entitled to receive a wage in respect of the work done on that day if he had worked for a full normal working day means then you have to divide it based on the hours if your normal work day is eight hour if any person who had worked for four hour so his payment will be half of that and further to receive wage for a full normal working day in any case where his failure to work is caused by his unwillingness to work and not by the omission of the employer to provide him that work means if he willingly not want to do that work he is not 
eligible to get the full pay and in such other cases and circumstances where it has been prescribed then the wage for two or more class of work what is it happening and how if there is a two different classes of work which is a different rate of minimum is applicable the employer shall pay to such employee in respect of the time respectively occupied in each such class of work wage at not less than minimum rate in force respect to such class so the minimum rate wage for peace work you will decide based on the fixed under the code then fixing our work for normal working days so that are the number of hours of work which shall constitute as a normal working day one or more specifies interval in between there should be so there should be one interval the relay as per the fact act it has been mentioned so for a day in every period of seven days there should be one day for complete rest and payment for work on a day of rest or rate not less than the overtime rate means if you call someone to work on the rest day he should not be paid for that day less than the overtime pay means the double of the ordinary rate of wage then further the wage for overtime it should be double for the ordinary rate as per the hour he is spending at the work time or he is working for such hours then the mode of payment of wage it has been defined in there it should be totally in the current coin or currency or it should be directly transfer to the employee of the bank by the electronic mode or through the checks or otherwise the appropriate government means state government may notify that how they can make the payments then there is a fixation of wage fixation of a wage period the employer shall fix the wage period for the employee either as daily or weekly or the fortnightly monthly subject to the condition that no wage period in respect of any employee shall be more than one month maximum period of wage distribution is one month only so how it should be if there is a daily basis it should be end of the shift weekly it should be paid at the last day of his week and if it fortnightly so it should be second day after the end of the fortnight and monthly before the expiry of the seventh day of succeeding month so means if your wage is deciding for further earlier it was as the number now it has been decided that it should not be more than seventh of the succeeding month where an employee has been removed or dismissal in case the services has been drained or dismissed or retrench resign from service to become unemployed due to the closure of the establishment anything the wage payable to him shall be paid within two working days of his dismissal removal or retrenchment and the case may be his resignation too so there the discussion or the deduction which may be made from the wage what type of deduction you can made under the wage now earlier so there was some limitation not so much but now 
देर हैज़ बिन सम डिडक्शन दिस आइड इज आइदर फ्रॉम दी वेज एंड सैलरी वट यू आर पेइंग टू एन एम्प्लॉय देट आर दी एनी पेमेंट मेड बाय एन एम्प्लॉय टू द एम्प्लॉयर और हिज एजेंट शेल बी डीम्ड टू बी डिडक्शन फ्रॉम हिज वेज एंड एनी लॉस ऑफ वेज टू एन एम्प्लॉय फॉर अ गुड और सफिशेंट कॉज रिजल्टिंग फ्रॉम विद होल्डिंग ऑफ इंक्रीमेंट और प्रमोशन इंक्लूडिंग द स्टॉपेज ऑफ इंक्लूडिंग और द डिडक्शन टू अ लोअर पोस्ट ऑन टाइम स्केल और द सस्पेंशन सो हेयर लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड इट प्रॉपरली वट आर द डिडक्शन द एम्प्लॉयर कैन मेड फ्रॉम द वेज ऑफ एम्प्लॉय not with the standing anything contained in any other law for the time being in force there shall be no deduction from the wage of the employee except those as are authorized under this code for the purpose of this subsection what is mentioned under this code is any payment made by an employee to the employer or his agent shall be deemed to be deduction from his wage any loss or wage in an employee for a good or sufficient cause resulting from withholding of increment promotion including the stoppage of increment the reduction to a lower post shall not be deemed a deduction means these are not the deduction from the payment of the employees deduction from wage in case where the provision made by the employer for such purpose are satisfying in requirement specified in the notification that appropriate government decided now the deduction what may be incurred while the deduction from the wages of an employee made in accordance with the provision of this code that are namely the fine imposed on him that can be deducting from his salary then deduction for his absence from duty deduction for any damage or loss or good ex or goods expressing interest to the employee for custody less than money for which he is required to account where such damage or loss is directly attributed to his neglect of default then deduction for house accommodation if you are supplying that you can made from the salary of the employees and deduction for such amenities or services supplied by the employer as the appropriate government has been decided so for this purpose the expression means services does not include the supply of tool and raw materials required for the purpose of employment so that is for the company requirement not for individual so there is a four specific things which employer can deduct from the wage of a employee that is fine imposed to him deduction for absence then deduction for damage or loss then deduction for some accommodation or some any goods expressly interested to an employee for custody and deduction for some amenities which is provided to him then there are such recoveries advance for whatever he has taken then loan you can recover deduction for recovery of loan grant for house building if such facilities organization are providing then deduction of income tax it is also a statutory levy by the central government then deduction for subscription for repayment of advance from any social security then the deduction for payment of cooperative societies if they are the facility providing and then employer can deduct it from the salary of any employee deduction made with the written authorization of the employee for payment of fee and contribution payable by him for the membership of any trade union but they need the consent for that the recovery of losses sustained deduction for recovery of losses sustained that could be recovered from the employees deduction for recovery 
deduction made with the written authorization of the employee for contribution of the prime minister national relief it cannot be directly but there you means employer need to take a consent from the employee then if there is some another laws based on that accordingly you can deduct the wage and recovery from the employee where the total deduction authorized under section 2 exceed 50 percent of the wage the excess may be recovered in such manner as may be prescribed where any deduction is made by the employer from the wage of employee under this section but not deposited in the account of the trust or government fund or any other account as required under the provision of the law for the time being in force such employee shall not be held responsible for the default so here one important thing is mentioned the 50 percent of deduction that can be made from the salary of any employee earlier it was up till 75 percent and the fine many fines imposed by the employer that could be deducted from that but here any deduction made by the employer the employee is not responsible for that if not paid or deposited in the trust or government fund so the total amount of fine may be imposed in any one wage period or any employee shall not exceed amount equal to the 3%. So it has been defined that if fine has to be imposed, so what it should be? It should not be 3% of the wage payable to him in respect of that wage period. So deduction for absence from duty, so it should be as per the R. If he absent for one day, so it should be deduction of one day wholly or any part so required to work the amount such deduction shall in no case be a two page payable to the employed person in respect of the page period for which the deduction is made in a larger portion than the period for which he was absent means if a person is absent for one day you cannot deduct the amount for two days you have to deduct for the one days only what day he required the subject to any rule made in this behalf by the appropriate government if 10 or more employed person acted in concert absent themselves without due notice that is say without giving the notice which is required under the term of their contract mean employment without reasonable cause such a deduction from any such person may include such amount not exceeding his weight for eight days as may be any such a term b due to the employer in a lieu of the notice for this purpose of the session, the employee shall be deemed to be absent from the place where he is required to work if, although present in a such place, he refuse in pursuance of any say and strike or any other cause which is not reasonable to the circumstances to carry out his work. So the deduction for damage or loss is there. And then deduction for services rendered and he, he lost something so that can be deduction for the recovery of advances bank loan that could be a deduction for recovery of loans that could be made in his salary and that after the payment of bonuses here so these are the recovery that need to be 50% of his total wage the bonus eligibility for the bonus is that as per this new code that is the at least 30 day a person should be work in an organization in the accounting year an annual minimum bonus calculate at the rate of 8 and 1 third percent means 8.33 percent of the wage earned by the employee or 100 rupees is higher whether on the employer has any allocable surplus during the previous accounting year 
that for the purpose of the bonus calculation the wage of an employee exceed such amount per main sum as determined by notification by the appropriate government means the minimum wage they have been decided and then after it open to the employer that how much bonus he can pay to the employee and that is the minimum wage has been decided as the current rate for calculating of any bonus that is a seven thousand rupees and the maximum ceiling is a fifteen thousand or ten thousand rupees so where in respect of any accounting year referred the allocable surplus if that is available accordingly the employer would pay the bonus in computation the allocable surplus under this section the amount of set or the amount set off so any demand for the bonus in excess of the bonus referred either of the basis of the production of productivity in any accounting year for which the bonus is payable shall be determined by an agreement or settlement because it should be on the rate which has been fixed if there is some settlements accordingly it can be demand otherwise not and in first five accounting years following the accounting year in which the employer sell the goods produced or manufactured by him or render services as the case may be from such establishment bonus shall be payable only in respect of the accounting year in which the employer drives profit from such establishment and such bonus shall be calculated in accordance with the provision of this code on wage for the sixth and seventh accounting year following the accounting year in which the employer sell the goods produce and manufacturing and having the profit they need to be pay for the sixth accounting year there would be decided set and set off for the seventh accounting year it would be calculated further that and it need to be paid and eighth accounting year following the accounting year in which the employer sell the goods produce and manufacturing by him or in the services as the case may be for such establishments the provision of section 36 shall be applied so for the purpose of this section employer shall not be deemed to have derived profit in any accounting year unless he has made provision for the depreciation of that year to which he is entitled under the income tax the area of such a depreciation and loss incurred by him in respect of the establishment for the previous accounting year had been fully set off against his profit so the proportionate reduction in bonus in certain cases means the employer can reduce the bonus rate where an employee has not worked for all of the working days so it will be depend on their working means when you calculate the bonus it should be based on their working days how much day he has worked but minimum there should be 30 working days then he will be eligible for bonus in a financial or accounting year computation of number of working days how you can do that so there is a formulation given in the code of wage so it has been laid off under agreement that whatever you have worked for within labor with wage or salary means when bonus is there for what days you have been paid that will be included in the payment of bonuses a person is absent due to the temporary disablement caused by the accident arising out and in the course of his employment that should be included the employee has been in maternity leave with a salary or wage during the period he should be paid the bonus but disqualification for bonus has been mentioned here is that if he has made some fraud he is involved in the real erroneous and violent behavior then taping misappropriation and then conviction for sexual harassment then the establishment to include department undertaking and branches that are 
included establishment which are establishment consist of different department of undertaking or has branches whether situated in the same place or in the different place all such department or undertaking are branches shall be treated as part of the same establishment means you have one organization which has been established in 2010 but the new unit you establish in 2020 if that unit come under the bonus act means you have to pay that from your principal unit so that is a part of your business not a new entity payment of bonus out of allocable surplus so it is based on the auditing account of company shall not normally be questioned here then the computation of gross profit so how you can calculate your gross profit so there is your total sale then taxes and your cost of other parts so based on that you can compute your growth profit then administration expenses and other then it come to the net profit computation of available surplus some sum deductible from gross profit that is the part of totally differential theme so that we could be discuss it later on calculation of the direct tax payable by the employer when you have to calculate the final profit and surplus then set on or set off you have to be take care of the calculation then there may be some adjustment of a customary or in dream bonuses against bonus payable under this code where any accounting where an employer has paid any that puja bonus and other customary bonus to an employee and employer has paid a part of the bonus payable under the code is an employee before the date of which such a bonus become payable so deduction of certain amount from the bonus what are those and what you can deduct from a bonus what is mentioned under this code on wage is that any employee if he found any guilty so you can deduct final losses from his bonus applicable you can also withhold that all the amount payable to an employee by way of the bonus under this code shall be paid by crediting to his bank account directly means employee bank account by the employer within a period of eight months from the closing of the accounting year the time limit for is a that is eight months and application of this chapter to establishment of public sector in certain cases non applicability of the chapter means the bonuses is applied there and then after this what is saying that so there is the constitution of the advisory board and the state advisory board for finalizing of all the terms for the employment in the industry then payment of dues claim or audit how it can be accommodated through this new code on page the responsibility for payment of various dues under this code this has been employer if he failed to make such payment in accordance with this code then the company or firm or association any other person who is the proprietor of the establishment in which the employee is employed shall be responsible for such payment so every employer shall pay all the amount required to be paid under this code to every employee employed by him and then the payment of various undisbursed due in case of death of employee if any person any employee who demised during the employment so that should be paid to his nominee person nominated by him in the this behalf of accordance with the rule made under this code and where no such nomination is available for any reason such amount can be paid to a person so nominated be deposited with the such authority as by the prescribed who so you can deposit that in the comment account or in the 
liver welfare fund in some state that have where in according with the provision that are paid to the employer to the person nominated by the employee and deposit to the employer by the employer with the authority referred to the clause b of subsection then claim under code and procedure thereof so there are many authorities appointed to constitute and regularize this code and implement this throughout the any application before the authority for claim referred in the subject may be the employee concerned the trade union related inspection come facilitator so you can complain that reference of the dispute under this code if there is any dispute fixation of bonus or eligibility for payment of bonus under the provision of code that the applicable this code in respect of the bonus or any establishment in public sector too then presumption out accuracy of balance sheet so it will also be come under the advisory or the inspection of appropriate government and corporation of companies their financial presumption about the accuracy of balance sheet and profit and loss account of corporate and companies that should be accurate and examined through the appropriate government audit system so we are the during course of proceeding and authority under 4549 and that may be under this section then there is a provision of audit audit of the account of employer not being cooperation or company if there is such appropriate then appointment of inspection come facilitator and their powers what are their power under this who can do the inspection so the appropriate government will decide the appointment inspector and facilitator under this code and there will be no court shall be recognized or cognizance of the offense punishable then the power of officer of the appropriate government to impose penalty in certain cases the penalty for offenses under this code on wage that are the the employer who pay any employee less than the amount due to such employee under the provision of the code shall be punishable with the fine which may be extend to 50000 rupees if he is convicted as an offenses under this he have to pay 1 lakh rupees and imprisonment for near about 5 year so found guilty within the 5 year of date of the commission of the first and subsequent offense he shall not be second in the subsequent commission of the office punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend 3 month and a fine up to 1 lakh rupees so such provision has been made under this code and then for the company means anybody or cooperate and include that has been included here then the composition of offenses many offenses if i don't he will be to be imprisoned under this section and then miscellaneous provision has been made under this minimum code on wage has been mentioned the bar of suit protection of action against the good faith then burden of proof is also there if filed then contracting out any contract or agreement where by an employee relinquish the right of any amount of the right of bonus due to him under this code shall be null and void in so far as it purports to remove the reduced liability of any person to paid amount under this so this was all about this code on wage 2020 or 2019 further we will discuss this central rule under this code or on this code in the next live session thanks for watching stay tuned with us for fine tune learning don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel